Good evening. Tonight I'm going to talk to you about two functions that I find quite useful. The first one is IMAP, so it's another function from the per package, um, another one of those uh, functions that allows you to repeat instructions without having to write a loop. So we will see how IMAP is different from MAP. Um, and the second function is a KNITA function. So KNITA is this uh, package that allows you to write our markdown code and then compile it into HTML or PDF or even a, a doc document from or docx rather, a Word document. Um, and so we will see how we can combine these two functions to generate a document where uh, this the function will spit out sections of your file. So basically, you won't have to if if you want to show a repeating section. So for example, you you do um, you want to to show one graph in one table for hundreds of variables, okay? You want to do like an automated report. So uh, I'm going to show you how you can do that using these two functions. So you write, you, we start by writing a function that returns the graph and the table. So in, in my example, it will just be a table. And then using Knita expand and uh, IMAP, we're going to repeat this table as many times as we need to create a document in a couple of lines of code. So the document could be hundreds of, of pages long but your code will be a dozen lines of code. So it, it's quite, quite powerful. Um, so I will start with this very little script and then we're going to switch to the R Markdown file. Um, this script uh, is something I prepared just to illustrate. So these tables, maybe let me move my face. Uh, ah, yeah, yeah, that's what happens on, in Emacs. So <laughs> you, you can view, so Emacs is such a powerful editor that you can even view pictures. Anyway, um, this tables list, so is this object that you see here, it's a named list, okay, so uh, each each element of that list has a name, so which is a year, and then we have a, uh, a little table uh, with just a frequency table basically, okay. In the, in the R Markdown file you will see the whole code, you will see how I made this object, but suppose that you have a very big I don't know, Excel file, and you want to have one count or one frequency table per variable, um, you could do something like that to, to have it in this format and then use what I'm going to show you. Or you could even do it in, a, in another way where you would map the table function using mutate and map and all the tricks that I've already showed you in previous videos to have this in one go. Really doesn't matter. What matters is suppose you have these tables, Suppose uh, that you put them in a, in a list to be able to use this trick that I'm going to show you, okay? How you got the tables is not so important. Maybe you already got them from your IT system, uh, you know, maybe it spit these tables out immediately and you just want to put them in a markdown file, okay? Um, so basically, I create this function, very simple function. It's called create a table. It takes a table as an argument and a year, okay? And uh, basically, even without looking at the function, if, if I just use, I, I need to move my face. If I just, yeah, let's keep my face here. If I just move, or if I, if I just run this Knita cable code, this creates this table or here in my terminal. But you know, if this were an HTML or a Word file, it would be a nicely formatted table. And of course, instead of Knita cable to get the table, you could use Panda. Yeah, one of my favorites is Cable Extra for um, for LaTeX documents. So Cable Extra, it doesn't matter. This works as well. The thing is, I want to give a table, right, as an argument and the year. Here I hardcoded the year. This is not good because I would have to do it manually. Here I don't have that many tables. I only have eight of them. So you could say, well, you know, who cares? Just copy and paste and replace here and replace here and that's it. Yeah, but imagine you have 80 tables, imagine you have 800 tables or whatever, or imagine instead of just a table, you have a graph and a table, maybe something else, and you have 20 of those things and you have a lot of things to do and you don't want to be doing that manually. Plus, imagine it's something that you have to do every week. You don't want to spend two hours doing this stupid redundant work. You want to have a function that does that for you, okay? Plus the function, with nice. what is nice with the function is you can easily test it, you can easily debug it. If you start copying and pasting stuff, 
you will make a mistake sooner or later. You will forget to change the year. You will forget to change the index of the tables. That's going to happen. So you write a function to do that. And thankfully, uh, it's a very easy function. It's really just uh, taking the code that we wrote before and we don't hard code here. So that's already a win because instead of having to copy these two lines and changing the lines at two spots, you could copy this one uh, and, well, yeah, technically you still have to change it into spots, but it's a bit, you know, a bit more self-contained. You can copy and paste that, so that's, that's better. Now comes IMAP. So what does IMAP do? Maybe I should run it first and then I, I explain to it. Uh, if, you, if you give the, the list of tables to IMAP and you give it the function, IMAP will do the same thing as map. It will map this function to each element of the list of tables, okay? But there's something else happening. IMAP also um, maps, so, you, so your function here takes actually two arguments, okay? It takes the list and the second argument. This second argument is the index of your list. And if it's named, then you get the name. Okay, so because my list is named, okay, if you will look at it again, okay, my index is actually these things. So IMAP, okay, is just a way to map over these two things at the same time. And actually, you could, uh, I don't know if we're going to, um, maybe let me show you the documentation of IMAP. Um, yeah, so IMAP. Uh, so an indexed map, the shorthand for map to x names x. So it's just a shorthand for this thing. You could use map two, and map two, if you remember one of my previous videos, map, map two allows you to map in parallel over two inputs, over two lists. So here you could think that you have two lists. You have your list of tables and you have your list of names of tables. But instead of having to write map two, blah, 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 you can just write imap. So it allows you to, 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 you know, to go a little bit faster. Um, and so you, you, your function has thus to have two arguments. The first one is the list okay, uh, of tables, or the table in this case, and then the list of years, or if it's just your function, the year. Okay? And IMAP will map over these two things in parallel. So this is pretty cool because as you, as you saw, this already creates all my tables literally for free. Okay, so you're already 80%, maybe 70% of the solution there. Because now what you want is to put this inside the document. It can be a PDF document, an HTML document, that doesn't really matter. You want this to be in a document. And, you know, maybe you want to add a little section title as well. Maybe you want to use this as a section title, or maybe you want to add something else. So you want to add a little bit more content into your document, just not this you know, raw table. So for this, I prepared a little RMD, uh, which of course now I don't uh, see. Yeah, there it is. So this RMD, now I need to move my face again. I need to find a solution to this face situation. So the power of dry, the power of not repeating yourself. Dry is don't repeat yourself. Try to really not repeat yourself. Write as many functions as possible. Loop over them. Use map. Use walk. Use apply, apply, whatever you want. But do not copy and paste sections of code. Especially if you're a beginner, that's really something that you will want to, to, to do at first because you think you're going to go, to go fast. But uh, sooner or later, you're going to copy and paste, forget to change something, copy and paste uh, a wrong function at the wrong place or whatever, and it's going to be uh, a disaster. So the, um, in the setup chunk, I included the code to create these tables of list. I'm not going to really comment that. I will put the code inside a, a gist. Gist? 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 Uh, so you can read that. But it doesn't really matter. What matters is what comes next. Create table. This is the function from before that we already saw. Nothing new here. Now there's this new function called return section. So what I want is re I want my, my code right, to return uh, a section name and then to return my table. So this is where I'm going to use Knita expand. 
Hint expand is very, very useful, very powerful. It takes uh, the first argument is the text that you want. So you can literally write anything you want. So I, wrote, I used these two uh, symbols, hashtag symbols. Well, hashtag, I guess you don't call, you shouldn't call them hashtags outside of Twitter, but whatever. Uh, so this is a subject, subsection that will be called year, and then will come the number of the year, year 2000, year 2004, year 2008, or whatever. So for this, I use, so, so this text thingy uses string interpolation. So meaning that you can put a variable here inside these curly braces, and the variable will dynamically be replaced by whatever you want it to be. So I, I say, okay, this is my year in table variable which I redefine then over here. So this is the third argument of my um, of Knita table. And I say, well, year, year in table is year, okay? It's the, the argument year. So it will be 2000, then it will be 2002, 2004, and so on. And the second thing I want here is my table. So I put my table, I put the, my function call there, okay? And, um, and this will generate my table, okay? And then I, I add, you know, I, I say that okay, this this object is called A. It's it's a bunch of code of R markdown code, uh, markup rather R, R markdown markup. And you know, I just want it to I, I I add a new line just to go below that. Okay, so this function will return a section which for the year two thousand will be called year two thousand. It will show my table. And uh, it will go back, it, I will go back to, so it will add a new line. And I call IMAP on tables list, but now on return section, not on create table, because create table is called inside return section. And what is really important is to have a chunk option results equal as is. Okay, so if you compile this, what you get is this. You get, well, this is an HTML, but it could have been a PDF or a doc file, doesn't matter. But you get a, uh, a subsection name called year 2000, because this is the table for the year 2000. This is the name of the table, okay? So again, it repeats year 2000. It's not very smart, but could have put something else. This uh, is comes from the create table, okay, function. So maybe maybe let me add, um, uh, maybe let me add uh, hello from create table so you can maybe understand better what is going on. Yeah, so I have here my code to compile, my command to compile. This run in a second. And yeah, so this is the section or rather table caption from the create table function. And this comes from the uh, uh, return section function. And now you see. In a couple of lines of code, I have all my tables here with a section name, with a table, and I could add some text. I could, well, now I have this. Okay, this is actually nice because I can show you a third trick. <laughs> this, this, comes, this one comes for free. I could add some text. I could add a plot. I could add whatever I want, right? Now, what is this thing? Okay, let me first solve the problem. Instead of imap, I'm going to use iWalk. And now let's refresh. And as you see, this is gone. Okay, why? So I already talked about the difference between map and walk, um, but I, I'm not really satis satisfied with what I said. I think it was my really pre literally previous video. Map and walk basically do the same thing. As you see, they, they both uh, generated this document in this example. The difference is that walk is uh, useful when you just need the or when your function here that you're calling has a side effect. So the, the side effect of this function here is to generate some uh, R markdown markup. Okay, a side effect is is a, you say that a function has a side effect whenever it changes something outside of its scope. So for example, showing a thing on screen or writing to disk or uh, generating this R markdown uh, code markdown R markdown markup rather. That's a side effect, okay? So if you use iWalk on that, you will uh, just be interested into the side effect because this function does not return anything, okay? That's why with, uh, maybe I should show you again. That's why with map, okay? That's why we had null there, okay? Because the function doesn't return, 
doesn't return anything. Okay, did I save? Maybe I didn't save. Oh, what the hell? I, I map. That's what I want. Okay. And now let me refresh. Yeah. So because the function does not return anything, okay, you get this null step. Okay. So you don't want that because that doesn't look that doesn't look very nice. So you want I walk. And now this will disappear. The other thing uh, is that I walk or walk should also be useful if I remember correctly. If you want to continue working with the, the input. So for example, if I want to do then something like um, I think lengths. Lengths, if I'm not mistaken, returns the lengths of the elements or something like that of the list. Yeah. So you see uh, it returns this. So how many, you know, what is the length of each of these objects? So it's three, I guess, because it has three columns in this case. So I think this is going to work, uh, but with map it wouldn't. So let's try. Uh, uh, yeah. Let's try again. Yeah, so you see, I get this uh, this input. So so the input, so I get the side effects, and then the input gets gets piped as is to the next function. Whereas if I used I map, that shouldn't work if I'm not mistaken. Uh, let's see. Oh yeah, it, ah yeah, it didn't. So you you don't get the right result. So, but I'm still surprised that I got something. I I, I thought I wouldn't get anything, but whatever. Um, this one's for free. Anyway, what's I think interesting for you guys to know is that well, you have this. Uh, okay, what the hell? Yeah, sometimes if I start typing and my fingers are not at the right spots, things like that. Anyway, um, I walk powerful. I map very powerful as well, but it's a shorthand to map to X and names X. So you could use map to X names X if you if you prefer. But um, what I think is really interesting is the combination of these walk functions with here this uh, return section a function that uses Knita expand, which allows you to to literally create a document that could be thousands of pages long in 50 lines of code. And a lot of this code is me preparing the data, uh, which maybe you don't really have to do. So uh, that's it for tonight. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed. So if you, I will put the code of the R markdown in a gist. It will be linked in the description below. Uh, so yeah, see you next time.